With the rise of cryptocurrency and GPU mining, PC gamers all across the universe were under attack. So I was determined to turn this old Dell Optiplex into a 1080p gaming beast that not only performed and looked great, but was affordable for the average Joe. But there was only one man who could help me pull this off. Little dude, you are getting a Dell. Hey guys, welcome back to Tech215. I'm your host, Nick, and as you guys know, and if you've seen some of my other videos, for secondary income, I flip PCs. So when my buddy Chris hit me up to see if I could build his daughter a gaming PC, I was totally down. He wanted something that had really good performance, it had to look really sleek and modern, and also, it couldn't cost an arm and a leg. So in today's video, I'm gonna take the once flagship Dell Optiplex 990 and transfer everything over into the absolutely gorgeous Cooler Master ML330L. I'm gonna show you guys all the tips and tricks you'll need to know when transferring your old OEM hardware into a new modern case, all the little hacks you'll need to know to get around Dell's proprietary hardware, and best of all, with all the video card shortages out there from NVIDIA and AMD, I'm gonna show you guys a budget GPU that nobody seems to be talking about and there's plenty of stock and inventory on the secondhand market. So with all that out of the way, let's take a closer look at the stock configuration and all of the hardware upgrades that is the Dell Optiplex 990. So this is the Dell Optiplex 990. I picked this up from my buddy Bo for 35 bucks and usually with Bo, these OEM systems come bare bones, but this one actually came with eight gigabytes of DDR3, a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and an old school AMD HD 6670. It also came with a PCI Express 3.0 add-in card with four type A ports, so that was actually a nice touch. But at the heart and soul of today's build is the i7-2600, one of Intel's flagship Sandy Bridge CPUs. It was four cores, eight threads, 3.4 gigahertz base, 3.8 gigahertz turbo, eight gigs of Intel smart cache, and a TDP of 95 watts. Still decent for Fortnite and other easier to play esports titles. The Dell Q67 Express motherboard was perfect as well since it was a micro ATX board that fit our case. It featured four DDR3 DIMMs. It also came equipped with two PCI Express ports. It has everything we need. Now in terms of upgrades, we ditched the Dell stock PSU and upgraded to an EVGA 550 watt. And even though it had already come with eight gigabytes of DDR3, I wanted to have 16 gigs total, so I just swapped the four two gigabyte sticks for four four gigabyte sticks. I picked up a brand new Kingston A400 240 gigabyte drive from Amazon for 32 bucks for our boot drive. Now for some much needed bling and airflow, we added a pair of green LED up here 140 millimeter fans for the top exhaust and three up here 120 millimeter fans for the front intake and rear exhaust. Which brings me to our next piece, the star of the show, the Cooler Master ML330L Micro ATX case. It comes with a mesh front panel, tempered glass, a basement for the PSU, has a wonderful 3.5 inch drive bay in the basement and two 2.5 inch drive mounts for easy access and clean cable management for your SSDs. And finally, the graphics card, something I'm so psyched to show you guys, the GTX 780 Founders Edition. I got it for 75 bucks off eBay. These cards are going for a little bit more right now, but even with the age of this card, I was shocked at the performance this card offers. Released back in May of 2013 for a suggested MSRP of 650 bucks, this card features 2,304 CUDA cores, a base clock speed of only 863 that boosts up to 900, and three gigabytes of GDDR5, but it has a massive 384-bit memory interface and a memory bandwidth of 288 gigabytes per second. But with the exception of only having three gigabytes of VRAM, it also requires a six and an eight pin PCI Express connector, and it has a monster TDP of 250 watts. So in terms of performance, it's just a tad bit better than a GTX 1050 Ti, but substantially less power efficient.
Okay, so now that I showed you guys an overview of the stock configuration, all the hardware upgrades going into today's Optiplex, there's a few things you guys are going to need to know in order to get this machine to boot into another case. Because remember guys, Michael Dell did not engineer the Dell Optiplex 3090 to be used as a budget gaming PC in 2021. So let's bring up the first thing you'll need to worry about, and that is the power supply. So if you have a first, second, or third gen Intel CPU in your system, you have nothing to worry about. So a normal 24 pin ATX power supply connector built into the motherboard. Now, say you have a fourth gen Intel CPU in your Dell Optiplex. This is where you're gonna have to get an adapter, most likely a 24 to eight pin adapter. But luckily, if you guys do need the 24 to eight pin adapter, they're super cheap on eBay. They're around eight bucks. I will leave a link in the description down below. But again, if you have a first, second or third gen Intel CPU in your Dell Optiplex, you do not have to worry about the 24 pin ATX power supply connector. Any normal power supply that you get at a store like an EVGA or a Corsair will do the job just fine. So the second thing you're gonna to wanna to bring over from your Dell Optiplex into your new case is the temperature sensor. As you guys can see from this B-roll, it's this little white plug goes into your motherboard. And basically what this does is it detects the temperature in your system. And if you don't bring that over, you will get the warning at startup but also your CPU fan is gonna spin at 100% max the whole time. It's just easy to bring over and hide. You tuck it behind the case. This way it keeps a close eye on the temperature. My CPU fan was quiet and effective. The third thing you're gonna to wanna to bring over with your Optiplex is the Dell chassis intrusion switch. And the reason why they do this is that in case someone ever steals the system and opens it. So basically when the case is closed, the Dell chassis intrusion switch is in the down position. But when it's up, that lets the system know that, hey, the side panel has been removed. And I know a lot of system administrators can set their systems to where the machines won't even boot unless this is in the down position. So a good way to get around this is to just bring it over into your new case, hook it up to your motherboard like I'm showing here in the B-roll, and make sure that the pin is pushed all the way down with a piece of something like electrical tape. And then you can hide that in your PSU basement or behind your motherboard tray. This way you won't get that error at system startup and you won't have to worry about your system turning on and off because if you don't, that can be one of the consequences of not having the Dell chassis intrusion switch turned to the down position. And fourth and finally, and this trips people up the most, is the front panel connectors and the power switch. Basically, there's two ways to do this. If you guys really wanna do this the right way, go check out my buddy DLM Tech Garage. He has some amazing videos on this and I've researched the crap out of this and I didn't even notice they sold these adapters until I saw my buddy's videos. He's really great at this kind of stuff. Basically, it takes your entire front panel connector and your power switch, you pop these two adapters over it, and then you would plug everything in from your front panel connectors from your case into these adapters and everything works like normal. But we didn't do that. What we did was we rigged our power switch, and if you guys notice, you'll see five pins. On the far left-hand side, two pins, this is where you're gonna put your power switch at. Now in the middle two, you can use pretty much anything you want. For me, I use the jumper. You can use your hard drive LED plus and minus to basically jump those pins. And then you can leave the top right pin and below it, there's a blank pin, you can leave them alone. But if you don't jump those two middle pins with something like your hard drive LED plus and minus or a regular two pin jumper, the system will start, but then ultimately just turn off. So it's very important that you either get the adapters or you make sure you jump those two middle pins. Very important. And what I did with my system was, I basically just took the entire front panel, the two USB and the front audio switch and brought it with me. And I took that into the power supply basement as well. The better way to do it would be to go out and spend the 25 bucks and get the adapters. But I didn't do that in my video because I like to do things as cheap as possible. So again, go check out my buddy, the DLM Tech Garage. All right, so let's put this thing together through a build montage, and then I'll be back with some benchmark numbers for you.
Okay, so let's see what this beautiful new Dell Optiplex 990 can do. And first up, as always, is Unigen Heaven, where we scored a 105 FPS and a score of 2612. Funny because this crushes the white and green Lenovo build I did recently, and it had an i7-4770 and a GTX 1050 Ti. It goes to show the raw horsepower of this once high-end $650 card. On the Fortnite, we're at Pro Settings. We saw an average FPS of 182 and a 1% 1 low of 135. And at high settings, we saw a dip down to 113 and a 1% low of 90. Nothing but smooth sound with Fortnite. Let's max everything out on Apex Legends. And I was pleasantly surprised to see we were over the magic 60 FPS number at 64 FPS and a 1% low of just 49. This card is really doing way better than I thought. And even on a 10 year old quad core like the i7 2600. GTA 5 is up next, and this game is like fine wine. It just gets better and better as time goes on. I've never seen a game this popular that's this old. With the settings totally maxed out, we got a super smooth playable experience with an average of 56 FPS and a 1% low of 47. So if you guys have an older Optiplex and you want to make it look pretty and put it in a new case, just know it's totally possible. And yes, prices are totally crazy at the moment in the GPU department, but I really do think something like the GTX 780 is a great card just to hold you over until this graphics card madness comes to an end, just like it did in 2019. That's all the time we have for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Just goes to show if you have an older Dell Optiplex or an HP or a Lenovo, you can easily put it into a new case and spruce it up, and it's like a whole new build. And I know that graphics cards right now are totally through the roof, so go out there and try to find good deals because the graphics cards are super overpriced right now, but I'm telling you guys, if you look really hard and do your due diligence, you can find some really amazing deals out there. You just gotta really look. But remember, hit the like button. Remember to subscribe, put notifications on so you get notified the second I drop a new video. Follow me on Instagram at tech underscore 215, where we post stuff about the channel and about PC tech. If you guys have any questions about a Dell Optiplex, an HP, or a Lenovo, Leave them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. But I should be back in a week with more tech content. Peace! He is going to be building his first gaming PC and we're taking him to the almighty Micro Center. Ah. You guys excited? Yes. All right, let's fucking go, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Shit, your first time at Micro Center. This is, a, this is like a religious experience, dude. <laughs> The, the P450 Tomahawk. Right. Max. The Max. Two. And then what CPU did you end up getting? The... Ryzen 5. Ryzen 5. 3600. 3600. What did I buy? A... iCore? No, yeah. the i7. What is it? <laughs> it <did. laughs>